G'day, 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 everyone. How are we doing? Woo! I love it, I love it. I can't. Come sit there. No, Sam. Yeah, come on. We're all friends here. We're all friends. All right, so everyone, welcome to Arms to Cosplay, reimagining character designs and bringing them into reality. And already looking out at this incredible audience, I can see some of you have done just that. <laughs> and yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So, first up, let us introduce ourselves. So, who we are. So, I will go first because I've got the microphone. I am Kiralee Cosplay, as per my weird accent, I am from the land down under, um, and I am here because of Crown, I am the Australian Champion. So um, and I did win with a certain artist's uh, cosplay design, and that certain cosplay, oh, it was cosplayer and artist, it's Sunset Dragon! Hi. <laughs> how long have you been cosplaying and how long have you been designing? Too long? <laughs> um, cosplay since 2006. I am ancient. And drawing forever, but doing cosplay designs probably since like 2010, 2011. A long time. We'll love you. Like, look beautiful. <laughs> yes, you all look amazing. Uh, next up, we'll go to uh, Luna Lynn. Hi. Let's, let's, let's do this, okay? You tell us, firstly, how have you been cosplaying and what has been your favourite own design? Oh, well. That you've done. <laughs> so I've been cosplaying for about uh, 14 years now. Um, and I've only done one real original character, and that's my Spiral the Dragon. It was uh, kind of like a 14th century medieval inspired design that I did, and that was really fun. I wasn't super great at the designing, like it took me a really long time, but it was just this, it kind of incorporated a whole new type of artistic creative license than just looking at a picture from an animation or a movie or artwork and doing it, like making it yourself is just a whole thing. So I really enjoyed making that one. That's awesome. And finally, but definitely not last, we have, <laughs> uh, how do we pronounce it? Is it Emily? Emily Works or EVL or whatever EVL. <laughs> there we are. Tell us about your cosplay journey and what's your favorite own design. So I've also been cosplay since 2006. I'm ancient like this one here. Um, I. I started off really doing this one's designs a lot because once we became friends and she started drawing designs, it was like, hey, I'm gonna make your stuff. Um, but like one of my favorites I did was when I wore, did my uh, Sarah costume that I won at Crowns back in 2020. I got second place overall in fall. So, yeah, that was probably my favorite one that I did by her, but I obviously I did her Evie Fairy, that's up there. I've done a lot of her designs. <laughs> Yes. Excellent. Excellent. One thing we have in common is that we all love sunset. Um, <laughs> all right. The next thing is we're going to be discussing today the difference between a original design and an original or own character. So an original design is a redesign of an existing character and an original character or own character is a completely new character you cre create for a specific story or world. So literally, We've got some photos up there of you in both of those. Do you want to tell us a little bit about both of those designs? Yeah, so uh, the one on the left is um, Raven from Teen Titans, and that is from the artwork of No Flutter. Um, oh my gosh, that was really hard to make. Because <laughs> um, so, some of it you have to, you have like gravitational challenges or it's like fit challenges. <laughs> what is gravity, <laughs> right? <laughs> from, from concept to actual physical design. Um, but it is a little easier than, say, on the right, which was an original character that I made. Um, it's a Star Wars character. Her name is Rel. Um, she's a Chandrillan fashion designer, and she went on vacation on the Star Cruiser last year. Uh, the, I wanted to kind of make her look a little bit Mon Mothma um, with like the Chandrillan, like, <coughs> 
straight line kind of Japanese inspired but make it very futuristic and her whole thing is like gold, metallic gold, gold and stuff. So just it's such a different kind of challenge than looking at someone else's artwork and just kind of like, okay, I get the general shape and the idea of what fabrics I want to use, but the original character, it's, I don't know, it's, it's a fun exercise in uh, just the ultimate form of creativity, I guess. I didn't even do a drawing for that one. It was just all in my head. And I, when I first started, I literally got my fabrics and kind of like draped them on my form in the places they were going to be and was like, yes. <laughs> I didn't even do an artwork for that one. It was just all in here. Beautiful. All right. So the next thing is, it's really important and something that all of us really, really hold very dear to our heart is that both original, de uh, original designs and original characters are valid cosplays, right? Can we get, yes they are. Yes they are. <laughs> Remember, anything goes in cosplay, except sometimes in competitions, but we'll get into that a bit later. So who here, just if I could see a, a show of hands, by the way, this is a very interactive one, right? <laughs> um, a show of hands, who here has ever entered a competition with either an original character or a owned, owned, like, original character or original design? Wow. wow. <laughs> we are the brave ones. <laughs> All right. So, um, let's talk about original designs. Who wants to play a game? <laughs> yeah. Do I hear a yes? We like games. Excellent. So the game that we are going to play is Guess That Artist. So the first to raise the hands, and it must be raising hands. I will be the pick of who that is. Um, We'll get first dibs on answering. Calling out the answers is not the cosplay away. <laughs> All right, we are polite society. Now, the other thing is, if you get the answer right, or the first person to get them right, will have a choice of an Australian treat. <laughs> you will either get to try a Tim Tam. <laughs> Who's had a Tim Tam before? Yeah. Are they not the best thing ever? <laughs> or a caramello koala. Oh. All right. Yes, you can bite their heads off. <laughs> All right, they are chocolate, so if you like toast intolerant, please, like, just tell me. I have lollies. I have lollies if you like toast intolerant. I don't. I don't want to kill anyone. I, I like being in this country. I don't want to leave. So the first one should be an easy one. Who is it? <laughs> All right. You. Yep. Next one. Oh, I for in the back corner, the queen. Well done, Tim Tam or Caramel? Tim Tam. Yeah! Tim Tam and Caramel. Tim Tim. 
relatively new. Yeah. That's not going to hurt sick. It's all fine. It's all part of my shmink. <laughs> well done. Okay. <laughs> Next one. We're learning some new people. Yeah. I'll give you a hint. She's an Aussie. She also was a WCS representative very recently. No? <laughs> Terry, go and tell him. Is it Tiger Kun? Tiger Kun, do you want a caramel koala? <laughs> the koala. Yeah, too bad. No. Oh. <laughs> Sad. <laughs> Alright, next one. Oh, here we are. Yeah, Desi does. Well done. Oh, yeah. She's here this weekend too in um, the cosplay area, so make sure you guys go check her out. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so much. Alright, next one. They're on set. Oh, I had to go and I know you've already answered this well. Sarah had her hand up first, but I'm going to give it a go. Anyone? Anyone? Sarah? Beautiful. Would, uh, Tim Tam or Caramella? Oh, I Caramella. <laughs> there we are. I'm just going to bring you the camera. Eat it. Just throw it. I'm going to I know. This is the joy. I'm introducing you guys to new artists. Enjoy. All right. Yep. Oh, you know the answer. Oh, yes. Second. Oh, no. Tim Tam. Well, two caramelos left, so you get two time. <laughs> Alright. Okay, next one. Okay. Yes. Classy K? Yeah. Hi. Caramello, please. Caramello? Thank you for being in the front row. Yeah. <laughs> I remembered you asked. <laughs> Alright, and that is the end of our game. So now I throw it over to you guys. Who else is there who we have not included? Yes. Pen Designs. Pen Designs, absolutely. Yep. What was it? Mocha Berry, yes, absolutely. Yep. This is for original characters and original design, but staff is always Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we we discussed Saki's own, but then because it was more original characters and we wanted to do, yeah. But like, she's also done some beautiful original designs as well. Like her Cinderella dress is on my list. <laughs> it's great. All right, lovely. Anyone else that we know before we continue on? Well, thank you all so much for playing. So now we're going to have a little bit of a talk with our panelists. Well, I catch my breath. Um, <laughs> why are original designs so appealing to cosplayers? And I'm going to start right in the center. So, Eva Lee Cosplay. I'm just going to call you all the different variations of your name throughout this panel. Sounds good, mate. <laughs> why, why are original characters so appealing to cosplayers? So, for me personally, I, I like doing original designs because uh, a lot of times it kind of expands on the design of the character. So. Um, particularly for anime, I think that's a big thing because with anime, designs are very simple because it has to be animated, correct? So when you do original designs, you get to expand your skill set, you get to make something that's a little more complex, um, and you can really, like, you know, sometimes maybe I might not like the design as much from the anime, but then someone else redesigns it, and I'm like, oh, like that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and it's a good way to, I feel, challenge myself too, because personally I like to push my boundaries and make, like, play with original designs, I feel like I can make more liberal choices in fabrics and materials as well. So that's, like, that's why I like them. Now, I'm purposely going to leave Sunset to the last to ask this one, but over to you, Lynn. <laughs> so, what, what makes it appealing for me personally is it takes a character that you already know pretty well and love as it is, but it's embellished. They have fancy little doodads and trims and shiny things, and I think it just kind of like um, brings it up a level. Um, or, you know, like a seasonal spin on your favorite character, like my favorite Witch Venus. I saw that um, original design 
um, I don't know how to say it, Tazia, I think is her name on Instagram, but she has a bunch of Sailor Moon witches and they're just so cute. So things like that. I like the seasonal things. There's like um, other holiday designs and things like that. But I think it just is like taking something, especially animation that's kind of flat and it just like makes it all fancy. And then the challenge of finding the actual physical um, embellishments and materials to make it fancy. And I think that also building on that, it's a case of you are much more able to choose different textures yeah. and different trims and just add that level of detail that, you know, it's not always possible to do so. Over to you, Sunset Dragon. I mean, you, you, you're looking at both sides of the coin here, you know. What is it that you found and maybe what other cosplayers have said to you with your designs? Uh, <laughs> so, I think you guys covered a lot of what I was going to talk about, where you can, it really allows you to put your own creative spin in some, a character or a franchise that you love so much. You can add extra details in that maybe other people who know the series would pick up on. You can bring in different motifs. I like combining two different things together. I do a lot of EVs that... Um, no! <laughs> Shocking! <laughs> so, I mean, you know, Kajinkas is another kind of subset of cosplay design. Um, so there, those you can do anything you want with, which is awesome. Uh, anytime I can stick big old animal ears on something, I'm happy. <laughs> uh, and I just, I just think, it, you know, you can really show your love for that character even that much more. And I also really like how a lot of the artwork that fan artists do isn't so rigid or um, everything isn't detailed out. So it really lets the cosplayer, I can have two different cosplayers make the same drawing I did and they approach it completely differently, which I think is amazing. And people always ask me, like, I want to get a checker as possible to your artwork. And I'm like, please don't. Like, no. interpret it how you want to interpret it. Like, I love when people take it and run with it. So that's, that's all I got to say about that. And I guess <laughs> my next question to you in that regards then is um, I noticed that on your earlier drawings uh, for those who are patrons of a certain artist that you used to, like, suggest fabrics. And now you don't. Is that a conscious decision to um, like, let people decide? I think I just kind of suggest like very general fabrics because a lot of a lot of people do ask me, and I know not everyone is as knowledgeable about fabric or sewing. Maybe it's their first or second costume. So I want I want to kind of push them in the the direction that I think would work best for something like that. But yeah, I didn't listen to everything that you suggested. But tough. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly am not the best fabric person myself. I, I know you so are though. You, they were really good suggestions. I was just like, I, I don't like, like this. the basics. I'm not like a good guy person. So like, here's an idea, and then feel free to like go forth on that idea. I love it. I love it. All right, let's move on. So now let's talk about why our original characters exciting to cosplayers. So we're going to start with you, Lulin. <laughs> So my only experience in original character is Star Wars, and like Star Wars is like as much as I love Sailor Moon, at this point in my life, Star Wars is like, oh, I'm not becoming a little like I just love it so 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 much, <laughs> so much, and it, the universe is so big, and there are so many uh, possibilities that it's really easy to make an original character. And like my favorite thing about it, not just the costume, but I love creating a whole backstory for your character because that does influence the way that they would dress and the way that they act and oh my gosh it's like and not every, this isn't everyone's cosplayer cup of tea but I actually do like to uh, act as the character sometimes and I mean what we did with that group was basically like a three-day LARPing session <laughs> so, like after we were done we had to kind of like come out of it it was like method acting <laughs> we're like, okay we're not actually these characters we need to calm down but that was my favorite aspect of you know why why is it so exciting because you can just create an entire world of your own and um, by wearing that costume you're like living it also, shout out to Tekka Cosplay, who is in that shot with She's you. In the uh, yes, I know some American cosplayers, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, love that, yeah. love that woman. She introduced me to the word America. It's different to America, America. 
Um, all right, over to you, Sunset Dragon. I play D and D. Kind of like that. You can make this character that you thought of reality. I've cosplayed a couple of my D and D inspired characters, which is really fun. I also like a lot of fantasy things. So like. And I go to Ren Fair a lot. Um, and I'm gonna just live there this season. So, um, just different ways you can kind of. Uh, I also, sorry, this is a bit of a tangent. I also like making different character, like different clothing pieces that you can swap out for different OCs. And like, you can build off like three costumes from like one costume and kind of switch them out, which is also really appealing and fun. There are no rules, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, but that's definitely a thing is, is when there are no rules. You have a lot of freedom. Um, I know that, oh, I will get to it, I promise. Um, hold, hold my beer while I tell. Um, so, like, I, I made a Rococo Jigglypuff um, that was purely out of my head. Um, and it was because I love Jigglypuff. I, I found a pin. I bought a pin already. It's great. So I've got a pin collection of Jigglypuff at home. Anyway, sorry. Um, and what it was was that I wanted to use just fabrics that I had in my stash. And a lot of the fabrics that were in my stash that that um, went into this cosplay were actually fabrics that were from my grandmother who had just passed away and she taught me how to sew. So, I don't know to get emotional. Um, it, was, it was a way for me to connect with her, you know, to create this, this outfit. Uh, and then also to connect with people like that woman in the back corner there, um, who did a Bulbasaur, Rococo Bulbasaur, uh, and you know, being on different sides of the world, and they were like, oh, I love your Bulbasaur, <laughs> I like your Jiggly Pop, and yay! <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's been awesome to connect on that level as well. Um, okay, over to you, Evie Lee Cosby. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's the third different iteration. <laughs> um, so it's kind of funny because each of them kind of touched on the things that I would consider as far as like original designs too, because obviously I'm a big Star Wars nut, like this one on my right, and I'm also a big D&D critical role nut, like the one on my left. Um, <laughs> and I think the explosion of critical role and Dimension 20 and all that kind of really brought D&D back into the spotlight and then has also brought out more like original designs because all of us can cosplay our D&D characters and then but also with Star Wars being such a big universe it's I made it you know I, I was able to throw that too like sit together because I had made the parts for Darth Maul that's technically a Darth Maul costume um, <laughs> that I had made for my fiance that he never wore so I wore it instead and I, I took my leg and made myself a tree like set um, but I also have like a tree like Jedi using my Obi-Wan robes because it's super easy to do it that way and I love I love obviously I love tree legs um, but I really like being able to delve into these universes like in my own personal way with things that are appealing to me. Lovely. Thank you so much. So now we're going to talk about yeah, competitions. So why and this is something that like is deep in my heart, right? This is what I live for. So why are original designs by fan artists good for competitions? So let's just let's just sit that in for a second. So we've got a few award-winning competition pieces here. So all of us three have won awards in rather large competitions um, using fan arts. Both of mine were Sunset Dragon. She is my lucky charm. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Emily, you go first. Um, so obviously that's my design that I won at C2E2 back in 2020, it's the Sarah. And I was like, I made a Pinterest board for her and I was like, these are, this is my inspo board and I was the art director, yes, <laughs> the art director. Um, and I just like gave it to her and I was like, use this as inspiration to create this design. And she put this, like, I'm not a big, like, I like, like I'll do armor pieces, but I like sewing and I wanted her to turn it into a gown. And she made this beautiful gorgeous gown and I loved it because I was able to do so many unique textures and things on this. Like all, all the constellations are beaded on that gown and I, uh, they're all actual constellations from Our Night Sky because I was being stupid and extra because I do things like that. And then like, that's competition. <laughs> you got to choose an extra outfit for competition. Right. And I embroidered all the leaves by hand on the top and the like pieces in the front. and. 
I did smocking on the like dragon scale smocking on the, the sleeve drapes to like add some additional textural elements. Um, and I just had a lot of fun making this because I was able to uh, explore with different like techniques and really push the boundaries as far as like what I had created um, before. Just, like, and I love doing that for competitions and I would probably get something else from her to do as a competition sometime soon. <laughs> Lauren Lynn, tell us about yours. So um, mine is inspired by Spyro the Dragon, which is a video game. And I played that so much when I was younger. Um, <laughs> this was just kind of an idea. I can't remember when it started. Long time ago. I just had this idea that I really wanted to make something with Spyro that wasn't kind of what I had previously seen. Um, I love just general medieval fantasy stuff. So I had it kind of in my head. And then in 2019, I decided to sketch it all out and kind of get an idea. And I actually did end up going around and seeing what commercial patterns were out at the time and kind of like taking pieces from those. Um, at, the, at the skill level I was at then, I was just kind of like taking pieces from different commercial patterns and then making them into what I wanted. Um, so that kind of had an influence on what I did here. But I didn't really have like a competition in mind or anything. I just wanted to make it. And I even just started collecting materials as I found them, like really weird stuff. Like the main purple is actually some kind of like, uh, like a foil spandex, um, which was kind of a bad choice. But <laughs> so choices were made. So, um, I, I made it for KatsuCon 2020, like right before the shutdown. And it wasn't quite where I wanted it yet, but of course with the shutdown, I was like, well, I don't feel like working on anything until they announced they were doing Ultimate Online Cosplay Competition for 2021. And I was like, you know, that could be really fun because it looks really cool on like video, which we had to submit for that. So I just like revamped her and um, made like new horns and new wings. And I did like my first scale mail tail down the back and I did a lot of um, different chainmail weaves around the belts and stuff and I had a lot of fun with it. There's there's a lot of smocking on there that you can't really see in the picture but I just started adding textures and details that I didn't really even have in my original sketch. It was just like this really cool exercise and what all can I add to this to like make it just feel really fancy. Um, it doesn't even have to be like big, it just can be little things and it just brought me a lot of joy. Oh. Yeah. That's awesome. So um, for mine, um, I, I actually, this is my second trip because of cosplay to the US. Uh, I came in December 2022 for Holiday Matsuri, uh, where I was a guest and that was amazing, amazing con guys. I don't know who's ever, has anyone been to Holiday Mat? All Mat? Yeah? It's good time, good fun, good you fun. You judged me. Pardon? You judged me. Did I judge you? <laughs> Which one did you do? We were the Monster Hunter duo. No! <laughs> the eyelashes, the pig and the eyelashes? No, that was the other duo. They the were the craftsmanship duo. We were the performance. Yes. So, oh, yeah. yes! Ready. I, yeah, hey! <laughs> Such a good performance. It was great. <laughs> Competition world is a small world. It really is, right? So, um, did that and then I went we traveled around and I ended up in Anime Los Angeles. Um, and in Anime Los Angeles, I ended up in Los Angeles and then Anime Los Angeles was happening at the same time. And I was like, well, I'm here. I've got some cosplay. I'll enter the masquerade. Um, and I had, I'd just finished Red, Red Riding Hood um, because Sunset Dragon put that out and immediately I just went, okay, well, that's me. Um, <laughs> and just, became obsessive and made it. Um, and it basically, I, I was like, okay, I have to do a skit. And I've got 60 seconds or 90 seconds. And I was like, okay, what can I do? So I was like, let's just lean into the fact that I'm Australians, like I'm an Australian and, and, and what Americans think Australians are. Uh, and so I did, what if Red Riding Hood was an Australian? Um, and that skit was one of my favourite skits ever, uh, and I won Best in Show, um, which I was like, okay, I'll just steal this from Americans, excellent. Um, it, was, it, was, it was a lot of fun, and then uh, about eight months later, or a little bit over, I found myself 
competing in TOF uh, in perhaps in Melbourne, Melbourne, not Melbourne, <laughs> Melbourne, uh, and and I won Australian, the Australian round. So that's why I'm here. So like. You know, the, the fact that both of these designs, I, I, I laugh because I'm like, you know, Sunset Dragon is my lucky charm, but it's it's true. Like, every time that I enter a Sunset Dragon design, things happen. <laughs> um, that's not to say that things are going to happen tomorrow, guys. Don't give you false, false expectations. <laughs> but like, I'm here, so that for me is the win. Um, but yeah, it's for me, why I love doing these types of um, cosplays for competitions is because there's so much more detail. There's so much more that I can put in into my craftsmanship than I can with a straight character from like an anime or a manga or you know a TV show generally speaking unless it's Star Wars and you're doing Star Wars. Um, <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow, check her out tomorrow. Um, and, and you know I'm not a gamer. At the end of the day, I'm not a gamer, so I don't enjoy making gaming cosplays, and that's one that has a whole lot of detail into them. Um, I'm sorry, but I'll never do Monster Hunter. It's just, it's not. I enjoy seeing them, but like, it's just not my jam. Monster Hunter is a very specific person because it's a lot of artwork. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, yeah, that's why I do it as a cosplayer. Now, as a judge, let's flip the switch and let's talk about being judges. So, just check, have we all been, I, I, sorry, have we all been judged? Okay, great. Excellent. I totally checked this before this. <laughs> um, so, from a judging point of view, how is it judging original designs? Not own characters, because I think own characters is very difficult to judge. Let's, let's just put that out there right now. Um, there's a lot of competitions that simply will not let you enter own characters. And to be fair, I actually agree with that because there's not a straight reference image that the judges can go that to that. What, how is that, you know, what is that looking like? And I think that's very important. And just to keep it all fair, you know, going into a, a judging room and here's like, here's my mood board. And this is my cosplay, <laughs> you know, which you can, and that's absolutely fine. But I think when you enter a judging room, you need to make the judges work easier, right? And if you give them a mood board, you're making their their work harder, and so it's it's harder for them to score you. Um, and yeah, just don't make life hard for judges and don't be rude, right? Anyway, I'm going to hand it over to you guys. Who wants to speak first? Sunset, do you want to go first? Yeah. Never. <laughs> I've honestly only judged one costume contest ever. I'm not, I'm not a huge com competitor or competitor, but I love all of you. Come on. <laughs> it's amazing. I don't have the stamina for it. Um, it's literally all day in a costume. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> I'm weak. So, um, on the topic of judging original costumes, is that yeah, like, like original, 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 original designs? Original designs. Um, I think I still look for the same things that I would in a once one of an anime or video game costume. As long as you have like, a general drawing of your concept, um, and you can you can explain to me why you chose the materials you chose. How you made everything, what like which decisions you made, and why you made those decisions, and if everything looks neatly finished and proportionate, and like accurate colors, um, good wig styling, stuff like that, then I think I think that's pretty universal. Mm -hmm. um, and then yeah, if your costume has tons of detail on top of it, that's always fun. Mm -hmm. But I'm also not a huge fan of detailing a costume to the moon just to detail a costume to the moon. I also think that a simpler costume that is really well done, like perfectly well done, can be just as impressive. You see what you draw, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a maximalist, I'm sorry. <laughs> Go on. Uh, so when I'm at the judging table, like I, I like to look at 
I'll take that reference image and I want to see how well you take that reference image and how well you translate it to life on your shape because everybody is a different shape, right? So not, a, not everybody is long limbs and skinny things that you draw. Um. <laughs> I would say that, that Sunset Dragon is probably on the nicer end of yes, the scale is. to Absolutely. some of the designers. Um, so some, people, some people like... <laughs> Yeah, they like to stretch us out and we're not that tall. Um, but taking legs to armpits. <laughs> and how will you translate it and, and make it fit, you know, you? Because obviously sometimes we're gonna have to work things to fit our bodies. Like when you say I had to like change the shape and strength like you see the like how far down she drew the armor. I couldn't make it that little otherwise I couldn't sit down. <laughs> So that was like a decision, like I had to be like, I couldn't make that V that deep because it would dig into a chair <laughs> if I were trying to sit at all. So I had to like adjust the shape um, to better like fit me and so I could have some comfort um, to an extent in this costume. Um, but like take how you translate that and then how you thoughtfully um, take that drawing and embellish it like and and seeing that breakdown of your thought process of like the decisions you make and obviously when you're judging you kind of have to factor in that accuracy a little bit but at the same time you have to give that leeway as to like making sure it, it's the fit that matters it's like how it fits your body and your form like um you can throw some of those accuracy details to the window to make sure that it works and that's something you have to kind of keep in mind as a judge too because like like someone can make something to a T and then like not be able to move and not function and we want these things to be functional pieces of clothing like it that's that's a very important thing to me too it's like what is your movement like like there's like monster hunter like people build monster hunter costumes and they build them in a way so they can still move really well which is like a skill in its own so like taking that and like with the original science, that's something I look for as a judge, at least on the table. I mean, yeah, pretty much, pretty much nailed it. <laughs> <That's what laughs> I, Did I? I've only, I'm trying to think of the times I've judged. I think I've, I've judged the most Hannah Alexander um, costume translations. <laughs> what I really like about it is she has a lot of gradients in her artwork, and that's a that's a really crazy challenge. Um, just like seeing what fabric you chose for what part, because there's a lot of draping, gradient stuff, and it, was that executed well? I really like seeing how people interpret things, or like, did they choose these pearls or rhinestones and why? Or like, depending on the character, would this character wear this type of fabric? You know, did you pick a cotton or did you pick a satin? Like, that can kind of make a difference. And of course, like, overall, I just look at craftsmanship, but when in doubt, if I don't feel like I feel like I can't really judge on accuracy, which like I don't always think that's the most important thing. <laughs> like I, the thing I'm com competing in tomorrow is like my big thing on it is like how accurate it is, but like that's not the most important thing when it comes to constantly creating, in my opinion. Um, I mean, it's also a case of looking at the scoring as well. So like for Crown, thirty percent of the score is accuracy, you know, and that. I mean, it's the same case with anything that you wear into a competition. You know, if it's a major competition, have a look and see how the scoring goes, right? So for Crown, it is 30% accuracy, 10% ingenuity, and 60% craftsmanship. Yeah. So that's why I made the rock problem. I was like, I want those 10 points for ingenuity, maybe. <laughs> Of course, you want to look at how it's translated, but at the end of the day, yes. I'm going to be looking at your seams. And yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want to see your seams. Like she said, like the fit, like right. how it, because it's made to you, does it fit you? Yeah, because not like everybody's body is different, yeah. and we have to make sure that it looks good on us. And we're going to factor that in more so than if you're one to one with the design, I want to make sure that you made it functional for yeah. yourself. Yeah. 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 Great. Excellent. It's so fun. Do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you haven't done it, do it. Yeah, so the three of us on this side are like do the cosplay competitions. <laughs> and if you can do like original designs and Sunset Dragons, they're like, I'll provide the artwork. <laughs> 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 All right, so now. Oh, sorry, I got you. <laughs> Appreciate it. All right. So now we've come to the end of our actual slide and talking portion. There is a microphone just in the center of the room. Does anyone have any questions for any of our panelists or your host? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah
<laughs> Don't be shy, guys. Otherwise, if you want to, you can raise your hand and I'll come and like talk to you. Yeah. yeah. Um, when you're doing an original design of another artist, do you like do you communicate with that artist before <laughs> creating the design? Sounds like dragon. How many times have I messaged you? <laughs> <laughs> is it is it considered rude to see somebody else's art? Depends. And something inspired by it. And like, mm. how do you navigate that, I guess? Gone, guys. Uh, I actually have personal experience in this. Um, they're, okay. I, oh, I feel bad now. I don't remember, the artist. I don't remember the artist's name, but it's a Japanese artist that did a bunch of Sailor Moon characters in really beautiful, like, silk kimono. And she requested that we did not cosplay. But that's why, especially if they're not kind of an established and don't have that relationship with cosplayers, you should do the polite thing and ask. Some people just, either they don't understand it, how, that people want to cosplay and that what that means, and they don't quite understand it yet, or they just simply just wish you wouldn't. I think you should message them, at least try to. If you don't hear from them, I would hold off on it. Um, I just think it's the polite thing to do. Um, I recently decided to take someone a different artist. Um, his name's John Coulter, he works a lot, he does a lot of artwork for Disney. And he did a series of villains in um, like a Tudor, Elizabethan era stuff. You probably, if you've been to the parks, you saw them a few years ago. But um, I messaged him and was like, I wanna, I would love to make this for a D23 Expo, is that okay with you? Um, fully expecting, or being prepared for him to be like, no, I, that might be like, because I don't know, with Disney, that's kind of like a gray area. Sometimes <laughs> yeah. they're like, you know, that you don't have permission or whatever. Yeah. But he was like, no, please do it. And I was like, are you okay if I just make up the bottom half because it's only like a bust? And he was like, yeah, just go for it. I'm so excited, I can't wait. So I was like, okay, cool. But you really should just check in. Um, I think it's a polite thing to do. Whereas like now, um, Hannah Alexander, she's just like, go for it. So. Mm -hmm. Just it just depends. Sunset. Yeah. Sunset. Straight up sunset. Yeah. And three library. And I, I would encourage you if you if you use a lot of the artist artwork or just love them like so if they have like a a Kofi or like a um what's it called Patreon. Yeah, Patreon. Yeah, support them. Yeah. Yeah. I I mean I know for myself um I've now done three designs of sunset. Like I said, lucky charm. Um, and every single time I've, I've reached out to Sunset and I'm like, hey, so um, the back of red, um, what's on the cape? Um, and, you know, and then saying like, it's the same wolf design, she said. And so I was like, great. So I hand embroidered the wolf design on the back of the cape um, that took 30 hours to complete, but it was amazing. So thanks for that detail. You asked me. <laughs> I will say, um, I am very happy to answer questions like that, to I specifically made my Patreon for things like that, because I can also see if it's a popular artist and you have, I don't know how many people asking you for very minute details of something you drew, I don't know, five years ago, that can be a little, that can be a lot. Um, <laughs> but I do think like if you are looking at an artist that, I, I draw for cosplayers, right? So I have it kind of set up specifically to cater to everyone because I absolutely love when people make my designs. It's, it still blows my mind every single time. And I'm happy I love you. You <laughs> 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 come over there. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I think, yeah, if you if it's not clear on, like, I have an FAQ on my Instagram and all that stuff, if it's not clear, I feel like it's absolutely the right thing to do to ask them if it's okay. Yes. So, if you enjoy doing, like, designs that you personally come up with but aren't the most fantastic artists, but you like competing in your own designs, how do you suggest uh, competitors, uh, translate their design. I know just drawing it is fine too, but is there another way that you can like explain to the judges this is why I did this is there like get the point across kind of deal? 
That's it's hard. It's hard. Because I don't think you can do it. Yeah. Honestly, I, don't think I don't know how it is out here because I'm from the West Coast, but there's actually a lot of cons that just simply don't allow it. So ask either read the rules or just like contact the coordinator and just ask them. It's if they're open to it, like hot dog, do it. Yeah. But unfortunately, a lot of times they just don't allow it because it's so difficult, right? To, to I think I think it's also a case of it's it's a it, it's basically playing to your advantage um, against other cosplayers because essentially what's stopping you making the cosplay first and then drawing the reference image right like and and the thing is is that like and, and that's where I'm like it would be difficult for Sunset Dragon in a way to maybe enter a cosplay competition with her own design because she's drawn it herself. It's, it's come from her brain from every single step of the way, even when you've got the skills, right? She, skills in both ways, artist and cosplayer. Um, and I think that essentially what you're doing is if you if you try to do that, it's, it's kind of unfair um, because, yeah, you're, you're essentially doing the chicken before the egg. You know what I mean? But like, I get where you're coming from. And like, I fully support people doing those cosplays and like loving those cosplays and wearing those cosplays. And there are competitions that allow you to do that, um, that maybe will still look at your craftsmanship and give you, you know, that kind of one. It would be a case where you would need to look for a competition that scores heavily on craftsmanship rather than accuracy. Yeah, that's the kind of thing is that accuracy factor factors in, right? So, like, we, as judges, kind of, like, we need that reference and that point basis to, like, look at your costume and be like, like, we need to see something physical, like, on a sheet to, like, base off, like, what you're constructing, kind of see how, how it's supposed to be made and fit you. And it can be difficult when you're, like, especially if you're not, you, you can put it on paper, but if it's not detailed, like, what, what Kit does with hair, it can be, it can be more difficult to translate those accuracy points. If you if you do something that's like far more, like she said, craftsmanship heavy as far as the scoring, um, you you be better off. But like you're gonna lose out potentially on accuracy points because we don't have that strong solid reference. So like it, it can be difficult, and it's it's possible you just gotta find the right event for you that would Brown. cater to you. Yeah. Brown has a very specific set of rules. Right. for fan art like and like here's a reference image and they've got another set of scoring for own characters so you